One of the benefits of knowing that there are four conditions is that this surah proves that being good on your own is not enough. Being good for yourself is not enough. Our deen is not just a concern with ourselves, it's also a concern with other people. And you're not doing it for other people, for them, you're actually doing it for yourself. And this surah is the proof. Why? Because Allah said, you are in loss unless you do, yes, iman and amilu salihat. That's for who? That's what I do. But tawasi wil haq, getting the truth to other people, telling each other to be persevering and remain committed. Is that about you or other people now? That's others. And you know, tafa'ul in Arabic from which tawasi comes, it has ishtiraq in it, people working together. So it proves, it actually necessitates the concern for others in this quest for our own salvation. Uh, Ash-Shawkani rahimahullah commented, it includes ad-du'a ila ad-deen, wal-nasiha fi ad-deen, wal-amr bil-ma'roof, wal-nahi'a lil-munkar. This tawasi bil-haq, tawasi bil-sabr, what does it include? You're calling people to the deen. You are giving people counsel and advice, that's part of tawasi bil-haq. You're enjoining and you're commanding to the good, you're forbidding and standing up against evil. This is all part of surviving yourself. You can't just be a Muslim in your own little circle and not be concerned with the evils and the problems outside. You have to, you have to take them on and at least speak out against them. First of all, let's talk about the word khasara. Khasara means a loss above a pre-existing loss. There's already loss and you're adding to that loss, that is called khasara. By using, if Allah had used that word, then we would have already been in trouble and we're adding to that trouble. But Allah actually, by using khusr, a lesson we're learning is we're not in trouble. We're not in trouble, but we put ourselves in trouble. It's not like we were in trouble to begin with. So let's see how khasara, this word which means basically loss above a pre-existing loss, how it's used in the Qur'an. وَنُنَزِّلْ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَا يَزِيدُ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا خَسَارًا وَلَا يَزِيدُ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا خَسَارًا We do not increase wrongdoers in nothing more but loss. Wrongdoers, are they already in loss? Yes. And Allah increases them. You see the, the way it's being used? Then we find, وَلَا يَزِيدُ الْكَافِرِينَ كُفْرُهُمْ إِلَّا خَسَارًا The disbelief of this, their disbelief, the, of disbelievers, it will not increase them in anything but more loss. Loss above the loss they already have. What's the first loss they have? is kufr. Then what is the kufr above? The loss above that is the crimes they do against the believers. That's loss above loss. Their kufr was enough to send them to hellfire. But when they put the believers to trial, then they're digging their hole even deeper. So the word khasara is appropriate. Similarly, we find as I mentioned in Surah Nuh, وَاتَّبَعُوا And they followed, مَن لَمْ يَزِدْهُ مَالُهُ وَوَلَدُهُ إِلَّا خَسَارًا The one who wouldn't increase him or, you know, or his wealth or his children in anything more than loss. In other words, they ended up following people that are losers to begin with, and following them would make them even more of a loser. Now, this is the first benefit of not using khasar in this surah as opposed to using khusr. But then there's the word khusran, very powerful word. Khusran is what's called sigatul mubalagha, hyperbolized noun in English. Of an empowered noun. This is also used in the Quran. Khusran means incredible loss, excessive loss, unimaginable loss. You have to empower the meaning of that word because it's got an at the end. When you put an at the end of a word in Arabic, it empowers it. Like you know how we say ar Rahman? It's not just merciful, it's incredibly merciful. When you say غضبان, it's not just angry, it's furious, it's enraged. So when you say خسران, it's empowered you know, loss. It's amazing amount of loss. Let's see how that's used in the Qur'an. Allah says, خَسِرَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْخُسْرَانُ الْمُبِينَ He lost dunya and akhirah. That is ultimate loss. Isn't that the ultimate loss? What's so bad about that situation? It's not something light. He didn't just lose one thing, he lost both things. Dunya wal akhirah. So this is loss upon loss. This, this is the ultimate loss. Al khusran al mubin. Similarly, we find the word being used. Allah says, "Qul inna al khasirin al ladina khasiru anfusahum wa ahlihim yom al qiyamah." The true losers are, uh, are are those who lost themselves and their families on the day of standing. That is the ultimate loss. So the real loss is not in this dunya. Real loss is in the akhirah, the ultimate one. But nonetheless, there is loss taking place here also. But it's, not, it's nothing compared to the loss that is coming. Uh, he says, the Sahaba جمعين, whenever they would meet two of them, they would never leave each other's company unless they would say to each other, وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ 
إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتوصوا بالحق وتوصوا بالصبر. In other words, they would recite the surah to each other. They would recite it to each other before they would depart from each other. Why? They felt this is something extremely important to remind the other of constantly. This is not something you can learn once about and move on. And this is really what I want to spend the rest of our session today on. Is the difference between studying the Qur'an academically and learning the grammar of the words, the meanings of the words, the different qira'at, what the mufassirun have said, you know, all this knowledge, all this information. When you get too tied down with the information and the technicality, sometimes you lose the power of the message itself. In the end, Allah is talking to you and me. We should have all that knowledge. We should have, we should seek to acquire that knowledge. We should seek to have deeper understanding of the Qur'an that is part of understanding the Qur'an. But we should never lose sight of the fact that in the end, Allah is talking to me like, you know, you, somebody concerned about you talks to you. And somebody concerned about you gives you advice. Allah is giving you advice. And Allah is not talking about anybody else. He's talking about you and me. Fihi dhikrukum. In it is your mention. Allah is talking about you. He's not talking about anyone else. When you keep this in mind, we learn something about this surah. Talking about it is very easy. Talking about this surah and its demands is very easy. Internalizing them is very difficult. Every single human being, in their head, they have an understanding of what it means to be successful. Every single human. Doesn't have to be Muslim. Every human being. Doesn't have to speak your own language. Every culture, every society, every man, woman, and child aspires to something that they consider success. For your kid, it may be getting a good grade. Success. For you, it may be a promotion or getting a job or making a lot more money than you do now or getting a certain car or marrying a certain person or buying a house. Whatever it may be, there's something in your head that you consider success. And there are some people you look at and you don't even have to think about it. As soon as you see them, the, the thought that crosses your mind is, that guy's pretty successful. That one's pretty successful. How do they become so successful? I mean, in other words, you don't have to say it. It's in your head. And let me show you a personal experiment you can conduct. You're driving down a neighborhood, a fancy neighborhood, and you see a really beautiful house. Does your eye stay on it for a couple of seconds? Just, you know, couple, at least a couple of seconds. You may get distracted from the review and pull over. Whoa, that's nice. Because in your head, you're thinking, that person reached one milestone of success. It's in our head. That is something to aspire for. That's a kind of success. What are we learning from these examples? We're learning that the way we think about success and failure is not the way Allah wants us to think about success and failure. That's, it's completely different. And then when we, are, when we start rearranging our thinking, we learn something very critical about the society in which we live. And all of this is the message of this surah, by the way. In this society and in the world today, there are certain things that are defined as success, and you are told that that is success over and over and over and over again. In other words, the wrong definition of success is bombarded at you constantly. You cannot so much as turn your computer on, and a banner ad will show you the, what kind of car you should get. And based on your searches, these are the stores that want to sell, give you, you know, a discount. And what, the billboard will show you what kind of house you should buy. Advertising in every way, shape or form, being pumped towards you. Even among our parents and our elders, among our youth, what college you should go to, what kind of job you should get, which neighborhood you should move to. Constantly we are being told what is success, what is success, what is success. But then how do we reconcile these two things? What we learn is having wealth is not a bad thing. Having a nice car is not a bad thing. Having nice clothes is not a bad thing. But if you think that is success, then you have failed. What you, the, the, what you aspire towards is not dunya. Having dunya is not a problem. Loving dunya is the problem. Allah Azza wa doesn't talk against the one who has dunya. He talks about the one who is influenced by dunya. وَآثَرَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا He was, you know, the, the, the worldly life, he gave preference to it. If this becomes your preference, you know, you could be very wealthy and still not be in loss. It's, you could do that. And you could be very poor and still have dunya in your heart and you're still a loser. You're still in loss. This is, before we talk about anything material or on the outside, the first concern here is what is on the inside. So that's the, the issue of success versus survival. And we, we talked a little bit now about the rearranging our idea, our concept of what is success. 
Now that we've come to this point, the, the lesson to learn in this surah is all human beings are in a desperate need to survive. Human beings are drowned in loss. Human beings are lost. They're in loss, immersed in it. What does that tell you? That tells you that there are no exceptions. There are no exceptions. Allah doesn't say, إِنَّ الْكَافِرَ لَفِي خُسْرَ Some of the commented, you know, الْإِنسَانَ أَيْ الْكَافِرَ We'll talk about that. Like the human being, it's referring to the kafir. It's referring to the kafir if he is in khusr at the end. But you know, we find narrations of the sahaba who were concerned about the first part of Surah Al-Asr. When Surah Al-Asr was revealed, وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرَ Those who only heard that much said, what are we going to do? Until the exception came and gave them relief, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَصَوْا بِالصَّبْسِ Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. If you enjoyed this video, please do share it with friends and family. If you want to see more videos from this series, click on the box at the top. If you want to see other videos, click on the box at the bottom. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks.